you have to become more professional now yeah yeah okay. it's time it's time and there's a chance that um god willing some stuff might be happening so in my career Good. so god yep. willing so i should probably look a little bit more professional <laughs> yeah turns out i'm with it dreadlocks are not super professional it turns out uh no no i mean unless unless you're like uh like i've known a few guys who have like really tight very we hyper well-kept dreadlocks black guys obviously well okay and like Dang. And they look great, and they're and you know they'll tie them back with the suit and everything. You Looks mean you mean the woke, the woke comic book character who has like yeah. been gender swapped, and he's always got black rim glasses, dreadlocks, yes. always tied back in like a hair, and it's like that's yes. supposed to be Shaggy or something like from Scooby Doo, but instead they made him like the super smart stoner <laughs> guy or whatever. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Royal Path. I am your host, Andrew. And tonight, I'm going to ask Father and Cyprian, what is something that you are just objectively bad at? You've tried it maybe a couple times, and you're just like, I'm just not any good at this. So Basketball. Oh, come on. You're not <laughs> any good? I mean, terrible. Really? Yeah. yeah. What what's the weakness? Like what? You're just like you just can't get the dribbling and moving down at the same time. I feel like there was this game back in the eighties where it was basketball, but you like you punched people. Okay. Uh, as as like a jungle ball game, but like you could like punch people. Jungle ball. Them. Okay, jungle ball. Jungle. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I could yeah, do yeah. that. I can do that, but I'm usually surrounded by, you know, 10 year old kids. <laughs> sure. kids. So I can't really, that context of playing basketball and smashing someone because I, I can't dribble or shoot or run, especially now. So, especially now. yeah, I've always been terrible at basketball. So uh -huh. imagine the jokes that are going to come pouring in. So. Yeah. I like to think we're better than that. I like to think we have a better audience than that. So <laughs> uh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Come on, guys. Prove me right. Prove me right. What about you, Cyprian? Multitasking. Mm. I am horrible at it. Like, for instance, I can't. I know so many people like because I'm a software developer. I know so many software developers that will like put on music in the background. Like, even if it's like instrumental while they're like coding. Can't. Can't. If there's music on, I can't code. Hmm. Like I have a I, I I have a one track like single focus mind that's very good at a single focus. Ask me to do multiple things at once, like multitask. Can't can't do it. Can't do it. Yeah. Hmm. Not even like like. Uh, I can't hear you, Andrew. Father, could you hear him? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> How's that? Is that okay? Yeah, yeah, you're yeah. back. Yeah. Wow. This could be a good one. Yeah, yeah. What, some something something <laughs> out there doesn't want whatever we have to say today to be said. Let's say yeah. that. I was gonna yeah. text you guys this afternoon. It's probably gonna be a good one because of the nature of the day we were having as a family. I was like, oh, it's probably gonna be a, a good recording tonight. So yeah, we're having technical issues at the wazoo. So tons. You guys just gotta work with us. And I don't know what's going on with my mic. It keeps coming unplugged for some reason. I don't know. And when it comes unplugged, I don't have any sound, which that's not the end of the world because oh no, the world loses out on Andrew's voice for like 30 seconds. But it it might cause for some um 
on 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 flowing dead air. qualities, some dead air, which according to whatever whatever is good, dead air is there on purpose. But I um I am no good at card games. I cannot get like euchre um or like anything mm. with like a deck of cards. Anything beyond like BS or this game Egyptian Rat Screw, which I think that everyone calls it something different, it's where you put the cards down so you get like a double and then you can slap the deck. Or if you put down a queen, you have like two chances or whatever to put down another face card. You guys don't know this game. You don't know what I'm talking mm-hmm. about. Someone out there. I know something similar. I know a similar game to that, but yeah, okay. Yeah, it's one of those last, um, like one of those card games that I can actually play, but anything above that, I'm just no no good at it i just i don't know mm. they okay so then you could play that card but not at that time then that's the card you want to hold back i'm just like i don't get what we're doing here it's it's nothing mm. nothing that's really mm-hmm. striking so either i'm just not good or i just don't care but either way something's not so hmm. yeah hmm. well sorry well my mic, just, my mic just came unplugged again this is gonna be a good one so Is, is he unplugged again? There he is. Yeah. He's unplugged again. Wow. All right. Well, it's incredible, really. All right. Yeah. Boggles <laughs> the mind. Um, Father, yeah. uh, <laughs> what do you want to talk about tonight? Because we didn't really through the the we didn't really look at the forest through the trees and even come up with a topic. Is there something that we should talk about tonight? Actually, I have a question real quick before we get started. Good. Personal prayers. When we're praying at home, when is the appropriate time? Like maybe like uh, vis-a-vis like a season, like Lent or leading up to Nativity. Are there certain times in which you should be doing the chanting, singing, uh, praying, or just like regular like talking? Do you know what I mean? Like is there times in which one is appropriate? Because I imagine leading up to Pascha, you shouldn't be singing much, right? Like in your personal, it should be more somber, right? And then, like afterwards, everything should be kind of sung. You guys, for I mean, everyone knows I'm talking about that. Da, 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 you know what I mean? Like praying. intoning. Yeah. 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 So I I think the thing is is most people don't know tones, mm-hmm. and so like the average layperson doesn't know the tones, whatever the tradition is, whether in the Greek or Slavic tradition or whatever. So. Um, so most people are probably intoning or playing chanting, you know. Um, My Father who art in heaven, tell me the name, like kingdom come, let will be done on earth as it is in heaven, right? So most people are probably playing chanting, and that's perfect. It's it's always okay to play chant, and it's always okay to read your prayers just with a plain reading voice too, because I have found that. Um, in my early years, uh, coming into the church, and even now, subsequently, you know, being a godfather multiple times over, and then being a deacon, then a priest, it's like I've seen people fall into this trap of they spend a lot of time trying to figure out how to pray instead mm-hmm. of just praying. Mm-hmm. And so, and so, I would just say, just pray. Like, if you reading. If you saying plainly in a quote unquote reading voice, the Our Father helps you to actually connect and pray, then that's what you should do. If plain chanting it or intoning it helps you do that, then that's what you should do. Um, if you have some sort of melody that your church does, you know, Our Father who wants in heaven, mm-hmm. like then do that. But I think the mistake that you will make is if you spent five minutes fumbling and being frustrated over not being able to sing the right melody Mm. and you know 10 minutes praying half of that was being frustrated that you didn't have the right melody. okay sure of course yeah that makes more sense i just um i didn't know because i know that there are times where uh chanting plain chanting i can feel a little bit more disingenuous Sometimes if it helps for me to just drop down to just regular praying. So I was like, I wonder if there's something to 
why we plain chant as opposed to sometimes just yes like well there is i mean one thing about plain chanting quote unquote is you have to understand that in the end when it's used in church right it's there to help keep um help to keep from personal kind of inflection and those things that can be distracting you know uh personality sentimentality you know um some people they'll put the wrong kind of emphasis in the bad you know some bad melodrama on it you know so the the plain chanting is is intended to help cut that out hmm hmm right that's one of its functions yeah i think also to add to that Saint Basil, I think someone asked Saint Basil why we plain chant one time, and he's like, music mm -hmm. is like the honey that after the medicine. So, like sometimes the church, mm -hmm. by necessity, has to say some pretty harsh things. But if we sing it in a pretty mm -hmm. tone, it tends to be very, mm -hmm. very like it tends to go down a little bit smoother. So, mm -hmm. um, but mm -hmm. so that was my question. Do you guys have anything you want to talk about? I mean, China just uh, equipped their. The only thing that I mean. Robot dogs with machine guns. Forgive me. The only thing I want to add to that is, um, I don't know if I brought this up before. So again, forgive me if I have. But you know, something that people can forget is that um, praying isn't about you necessarily understanding the words in a rationalistic mind mindset. And for us, right? I can't speak because. I don't know what it's like to be, um, you know, a Venezuelan man. I don't know what it, I don't know what it's like to be whatever. But mm. for us, you know, the thing about reading, which is why a little sidebar of um, I used to be somewhat in favor, but never fully on board with people having you know liturgy books. Um, because my my thought behind it was it's it was a good concession for people who needed that to kind of have an on ramp into the tradition. But I find that when people have books in front of them, they're not in the liturgy; they're like reading. Mm -hmm. And the part of them that needs to be open to God is not really able to be as open as it could because it's busy, you know, that kind of discursive rationalistic. You know, mine is trying to pull apart and figure everything out in an intellectual sense. So there's something about just kind of, you know, being present and, and realizing one of the values of, let's say, memorizing a prayer is that you're able to be present in the prayer in a way that isn't really contingent upon you quite understanding it. Um, one of the values of, you know, plain chanting a prayer is that it puts you in a place to where, um, the actual kind of incarnational act of engaging your whole body in it, you know, it, uh, you know, the larynx and like all the thing. It's like it it brings you into a place that is a lot closer to prayer than you know reading. How do I set up, you know, this digital ledger? Well, you know, I'll, I'll wait. I'll wait. Uh. And so the last thing I'd say about that is, you know, the thing about prayer, and especially the thing about written prayers in particular, is that they are like the vitamins, you know, like I said before, when you eat a hamburger, you're not thinking about, you know, vitamin D, the protein, all that stuff. You're just like, oh, it's a hamburger. Your body takes it in. And then your body does the work. Like you're not even, it's imperceptible to, to you the nutrients that you are taking out of that burger, out of the, the wheat, the, the meat, the lettuce, whatever, right? And in some degree, if you understand what I'm saying, that's also what's happening when you just learn to pray, like like plain chanting and just, you know, pray and, and trying to be present with God versus, you know, trying to um, read the instruction manual. So well, that's, that's it. The liturgy is also, by nature complicated enough that it i haven't really ran across a liturgy book that really guides you the entire way 
because there's certain things mm-hmm. we change out every single week. And speaking of frustration, that's when people get frustrated. I see it a lot with newcomers who are like, wait, where are we? What are we? Why are mm-hmm. we singing to St. George? Right? Oh, well, it's because it's his day. Are we sing to him and see this whole thing right here. That means and like now we're explaining it. Now I'm talking to him about it and the liturgy still keeps going. I'm like, yeah. so better. You know, it's like this whole. Well, depending on what day of the year it is this liturgy book i mean it depends it's it's any day of the year it's not going to be the whole thing you're going to miss whole parts of it and by when you're trying to flip back and forth and figure out where we are quote unquote mm-hmm. in the liturgy you're going to lose whatever's happening in front of you so just you know that's my I think for for me for me there's also the aspect of like just i mean in, it's but it's spiritual practice in general but it's like there there has to be that set apart aspect to it right so it's like the candles the incense the chanting it's like i'm not doing any of this stuff except in prayer so it's Mm -hmm. like this these actions are completely set apart i don't do them in any other context except the context of prayer and so it's like Mm -hmm. with that it's it's like that it's like a like a conditioned response spiritual response almost Mm -hmm. you know what i mean almost like pavlovian like ringing a bell it's like Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. There's the smell of the incense. Okay, there's the candle. Okay, th- there's the chanting. Like, okay, now I'm, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm at least on the foundational level of where I can start to pray. Yeah, Absolutely. and it's set it's set apart in that way. Yeah, yeah. Need to engage the senses to kind of get the soul going, you know. So, anyway, that was my question. Do we uh we got something we want to move on from here? I wanted to talk about those those bumble billboards. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah. I want to yeah, talk about the bumble bring them billboards. Up. These ones, yeah. That Ugh. for the folks listening, there's a bumble uh, billboard that shows a a person supposedly very very happy, and on the side it says, "You know full well, a vow of celibacy is not the answer." It's in LA, clearly, because it's it's got the yeah, city of Los Angeles sign yeah, right down there. Down there at the bottom, yeah. Yeah. And then and there's, there's another, another one here. Thou shalt not give up on dating and become a nun. And this has got to be in the metro. This is in a metro train, clearly. Yeah. The, or a or a bus. Or a bus. And a very interesting look from that woman. That like uh yeah. well, both of them. Both of them are short hair. It looks like they Googled what what does 2002 fashion look like? <laughs> and then <laughs> took the person that they found and stuck it up in a billboard. <laughs> so true. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So what are your so, thoughts? Uh, so, if, I mean, the first thing I'm going to say, a little bit of a plug. Um, <clears throat> The sisters are actually launching their their website like this week or next week, and one of the first things that's going to be on there is um one of the sisters has actually they're going to have like a running blog, and the first post is going to be about this and kind of talking mm-hmm. about. So I, I encourage everyone to can put we'll put a link um, into that. Um, <clears throat> but that being said. Uh, it's like Cyprian had said in the thread, it's like a direct, if you, under, I mean, you have to be kind of spiritually like rigor, like rigor mortis has to have this like set in on you spiritually. <laughs> if you, if you don't see this as a, as a direct attack, um, oh, from, yeah. uh, the devil, but you know, I, I would submit, um, you know, there is. There are, and if I had a known, I would have maybe done a little, which we never do, which is, that's fine. Maybe done just a little bit of uh, pre-production on it and found, just so people don't think I'm just, you know, kind of playing, pulling cards, speaking of Andrew not be able to play card tricks or card games. Like, I, I have in my mind a couple, you know, there's these... <clears throat> prophetic utterances that various elders and saints have had. And one that you can look at is, you know, uh, about people finding 
like odd people, young people finding monasticism. Um, and you know, I was speaking last week and, and talking about um, the best wine being safe for last, you know? Oh. And it's, it's, and it's, you know, somewhat of a thing stated about um, how, how, like, for instance, monastics in the last days wouldn't be able to basically do anything. Uh, but even in that, they'll be great because it's going to be such a difficult thing just to be Christian. So all that to say, I would say, you know, perhaps, just perhaps, there might be a flowering of an asceticism. Um, and in the same way, Satan, through Herod, tried to um, cut off the Messiah, you know, being aware, you know, Satan, you know, let the demons serve you, as I like to say. And um, when we see the devil moving his hand or showing his hand so boldly, then it's it's a fair indicator to say like, there's something there's something he's moving against for a reason. And so I'd say, you know, definitely from my perspective, um, I, I think that, you know, just for chance, there might be a flowering ahead of us, you know, and he's trying to get out ahead and kill all the male children of, of the age of two. If you understand my, my reference there. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. Hmm. Has there, I mean, it's, it's, Sorry, it seems very interesting to be running. Well, I mean, I guess in L.A., you know, I mean, I guess you have a big Catholic population, but it seems very interesting that that would even be like that, that a marketing agency would even think that it's 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 so weird because it it's the like, audience, audience that you would say, be, yeah, would that's what I'm saying. Have, it's so weird. Yeah, their audience. That's what. That's why it's to me. It's you'd have to have rigor mortis because if like, <laughs> do you think that they're like? Who do you think your audience is? Like your audience, like doesn't even have a have a concept of that. It would. It's. It, it, it might as well have been in Esperanto. <laughs> like it's, it's like you know, they, they great no point. Idea. Great point. You know what I mean? They have they have no idea. Uh, but but interestingly enough, a brother sent this to me today, and this is if we need to get back to this, please don't let me fall in the wrong rabbit hole. But what's that guy's name? Budiger, uh, Butledge. What's his name? Uh, he's he's. He's losing it. It's just the, uh, I, don't, I don't know what he's talking about. What is he talking about? The, he, the kicker, the kicker, sounds. the kicker guy. Oh, 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 um, oh my gosh, the the kicker, the Kansas City Chiefs. What's his yeah. name? Oh, who? Oh, who did the speech that everybody yeah, yeah. went crazy about? The commencement address, yeah. which was totally yeah, like what's his name? benign. It was so yeah, bad. What, oh, I, I yeah. I, but what's I, his name? I, what's I, his name? I forget his name. Yeah, Hold you on. Look at that. You attack me. Look that you, see, you guys you see this is this is what happens this Butker. is this is a Butker. snapshot i see mean, Butker. 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 No. Butker. harrison Bucker. yeah but coming harrison out of Butker. cold father you'll be like oh geez zylo oh, zylo no, 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 no. and this is and this is what's wrong with our society look it's elder abuse you see that you see how quickly he was to like throw in like oh this old man kill him <laughs> Soil it green. Get it, get it out of here. <laughs> Where's the ice Please. raft to get this guy out of here? Send him on yeah. his way. What in the world, right? Hmm. Man. Anyway. Harrison Bucker. So, Bucker. B right? See? Yeah. Bucker. Okay. So, yeah. So, you started with Bucker. The first one. <laughs> close. That's pretty Booger. close, actually. That's pretty close, man. That's pretty close. So, right. so this, this guy, Bucker, right? Uh, Someone sent me today, it's like the Bene those Benedictine quote unquote sisters like denounced him. Did you see this? Oh my gosh. No. Wow. Really? Okay. 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 I, see, I want to be that guy. We're Why? Gonna For what? Internet. We're going to break the internet tonight because not only is Andrew's haircut awesome, but I want everyone to see this. Like, I just woke <laughs> up one day and realized <laughs> corn sucks. <laughs> to my screen but 
Uh, I'm glad he got that. That lag was oh, pretty man. intense, but Father did that get was, the joke. That was pretty. That was that was good. That, that was played timing. That was really good. good. That was really good. Okay, so I'm gonna send this to you guys, and it's um these sis, quote unquote sisters, right? Whatever they are. Okay, it's so coming through know. the. It's coming through the thread. Okay. So this is this is gonna be the one where like, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna take a cheap shot. I don't really care. Okay. Let me uh <laughs> let me send this over to myself here. You wanna start talking about it before I uh pull yeah, it yeah, up yeah. So, wait for me to pull it so up? Anyway, so so apparently these Benedictine sisters who do not unquote, look like nuns. You know, quote unquote nuns. None of them were. <laughs> That's my point, man. I mean, none pull, of them are wearing pull this up and you'll be like, oh, okay. Hold on. Oh, it's like, it is the, oh man. Um, so <laughs> it just goes to church. Anyway, so this order of the, and there's tons of them. It's like the horse show just keeps going on and on. <laughs> you just keep scrolling down. It's like, my goodness. Um, but yeah, they apparently, okay. you know, denounce him. Um, for his for his speech, and and to be frank, I haven't even heard the whole thing. I've only heard, you know, I've read a couple snippets that people were outraged over, and I was like, "This is yeah, I mean, ridiculous," you know. Um, but it's a okay, okay. Hold on, I'm, I'm, it's I'm, a great I'm example. Coming. Yeah, it, it's it's a great I'm example. Coming. I think though of um. <laughs> okay. Like, Wait, yeah. I, I don't. But I don't understand. So they, these people denounced him. Yeah, yeah. Like these, these, these are the sisters. What? Oh, well, these, these are, are the nuns. Wait, where's their habits? That's that's the first thing. I was that, like, that's that's the point. That's that's are, the none, point. are like, none of them wearing habits. It looks like a Midwestern sewing circle got a Facebook page or something. Yeah, I think the one. I think the one that is. There's, I saw two. There's one yeah. kind of, but she's kind of got my shirt. She's got a remix of my shirt super. on. <laughs> <laughs> and then, <laughs> let's see. Oh, <laughs> I saw one more down here. I saw one. Hold on. Ooh. This one's uh, no. Hold on. This one, Mary Ellen. Okay, and, Mary and Ellen. She's old school. I think one of the ones who actually. I think one of the ones that actually is wearing a hat, but I think she's dead. <laughs> so I think she's oh. like still just. Oh. Um, I mean, they none of them have their hair cover, covered, which is weird to me. Their heads covered. No. Oh, well, they'll fit right in with the Alexandrian church. So. Um, I don't understand. Is this a monastic community? Yeah. Quote unquote. So I sent you the article too about so this, where they're. Okay. Where's. Hold on. Where's. Let me see the article. Where's the article? Hold on. Yeah. Hold on. Yeah. So just to see the caliber of from, traditional... From N NPR. That's funny. We yeah. were just talking about NPR uh, so, before you came on, Father. Making yeah, jokes this, about it. This bastion of uh, traditional Christian okay, monasticism and spirituality. Uh, hold on. Let me see if I can figure yeah. this out. Which, you know, he's not even saying something that on the whole, the Catholic Church is supposed to, like, he's not, like, going against the teachings of the Catholic Church. He didn't come out and say, like, the Pope is evil or, you know, he denounced, like, certain whatever, whatever. He's just saying the stuff that the Church supposedly does stand for. It's just that they don't... Uh, no, don't... but he, but what the stuff that he said wasn't even, like, it wasn't even religious in nature. Like you could have been an atheist and that was okay. Like what, like he basically, he said, you know, to these women, you're, Oh, you're excited. You're probably all excited about going and getting married. And it's like, yeah. there's plenty of atheist women who are excited about going and getting married, who are excited about getting yeah. married more than anything else. Yeah. It's not, I mean, there's nothing, I, that's not but, even religious. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so, I mean, for me though, here's the thing that here's the connected tissue to the Bumble ad is that this um which here right here hold i'm sorry father yeah he yeah. De denounced abortion rights pride month 
COVID-19 lockdowns, the tyranny of diversity, equity, and inclusion. Okay. And then he told women in the audience to embrace the vocation of a homemaker. This is a, that's t- so he gave a totally Catholic speech is what you're saying. Yeah. That's like, how is this not a totally Catholic speech? I don't understand. <laughs> like, this is, is this not what's, is this not Catholicism anymore? Have they just given up on that? I don't. Apparently they have. Know. And, <laughs> and, and I, apparently they have, and this is kind of like my point. And I think this is where this connects with, I'm pulling up something else, by the way. Uh, and this is, is, from my perspective, this connects to the Bumble thing in the sense that you begin to see the poison. Um, and I was on a little rant last time. I guess I'll just continue. Um, but you begin to see the poison that's been infused to, to women. Yeah. So much so that the very ones who are supposed to be, um, you know, the the sentinels <laughs> mm. of of you know femininity and tradition, because that's what it means to be a nun, mm-hmm. right? Um, these very ones are just like have are they fundamentally betray um, betray that calling, you know. Um, And so it's very difficult, of course, when you also see that um, someone who not only is supposed to be, again, a a guardian of these things is becoming, you know, a a propagator of it. But uh, you begin to also see where. Go ahead, Andrew. Oh, it's like the it's like the very thing that St. Paul warns us of is like we become too enmeshed in like we're the soldiers that become too enmeshed in like the goings on of the world. Like, why would we Mm -hmm. do that? Like we're, we're they're fighting the fight on the fight's terms. Quote, like, and as Orthodox or as Christians, we're supposed to say like, Hey, God already told us what's right and what's wrong. Like he's already told us what's right and wrong. We're not going to be meeting on this field the way that you, that is quote unquote required of people now in order to gauge in the conversation. Yeah. Well, I think I, I think I just want to throw something out real quick if I can, and then kind of move on to this other point. And because this is, um, I just want to make something clear for some people. Um, and this is going to sound weird because I don't want to sound like I'm trying to make an apology for why our project is still relevant, but I'm going to. Um, it's we're like cooking, you know, frog pot boiling type of analogy. It's cooking right now, and I think a lot of people don't realize um, really how far certain things are, right? Because it isn't just. It's like one of those things where it, the wheels haven't fallen off, but you can feel the sway. Mm. Uh, and you know you can hear the you can hear the tire screeching, you know, and like something bad's about to happen because when you see this real move of anti in the place of, like, what is good will be evil, what is evil will be good, and having I think um, something where somewhat benign, a somewhat benign statement causes such outrage. It's like. This is crazy, you know? I mean, um, but the reason why I, I, I'm, I'm speaking about it in this way is on such a just societal level, this is, this is my point. It's just, um, it's really tough from my perspective. Well, let me say it this way. I don't know what it means to be a woman. I was going to say it's real tough to be a woman. I don't know that. I can say this. It's really tough to be a defender and to be pro-woman. Because if you understand what I'm saying, I'm not mincing words. <laughs> uh, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I am very much pro pro woman, pro all that, in 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 the right way, you know. Um, and it's very difficult because it's not one of the things that we talked about. Is like the trans thing is such an attack on women, right? And oh, one hundred percent, one thousand percent. 
that's an argument that never really took legs and I, and that like it never really took off and I don't understand it because I don't even mean it in the sense of like oh that's such a good like quippy insight I mean it because it's the truth it's just how can you not see it's a complete attack on on women you know and because it's no one really kind of saw that or at least you don't really hear that whenever it's brought up everyone focuses on like this makes me so mad and it's gross and it's you know so stupid like all that stuff is true but you don't really hear consistently the outrage from traditional people of how it's such an affront to women now mm-hmm. that that being said let me read you this email uh from a listener isadora god bless you isadora i'm just gonna father, read wait 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 Fa- father please forgive me before we go on yeah. before we please. go on like this 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 thing is actually like it hadn't really like it hadn't really registered on my radar but now like in this context it's actually it's actually really messing with me like i think that this thing this bucker going and talking mm-hmm. going and speaking and giving this and then the nun's reaction to it like mm-hmm. maybe i didn't understand where he was and that i didn't see the the nun's reaction but it's like there uh, be, he spoke out against certain things and is being attacked. And but if you flip it and you're like, well, what if he had gone and spoken in support of these things? Like, what does the world look like? Like he goes in instead of he denounced abortion rights, he goes and he's like promoting abortion, mm-hmm. promoting Pride mm-hmm. Month. So he's promoting mm-hmm. all kinds of sexual deviancy, promoting mm-hmm. COVID-19 lockdowns. So promoting mm-hmm. people being locked in their house and businesses closed and economies destroyed, promoting mm-hmm. The diversity, equity, and inclusion, right? Mm-hmm. Promote which, which is basically just the religion that gets you all of the other things, mm-hmm. right? So it's like promoting institutionalization of all of these things, and you're like, could you imagine going and saying that in like going and promoting those things in front of a bunch of young women? How insulting it would be to be like, we want to rip babies out of your womb. We don't want you to find a man, right? And we don't want you. We don't want you to be a certainly Pride Month, because you you can't have. There's no such thing as a, a homosexual babies, right? So we don't want you to be a mother. We want you to be locked in your home and unable to get out, and your children to be locked in their home. And it's like what? Yeah. yeah. What? Yeah. Well, let me let me take a little different approach to what you just said and then maybe andrew will again say i've lost it and put that old man out the pasture uh but i was reading um what's his name what's the live not by lies guy um uh, Dreyer. Uh, rod, Dreyer. Dreyer. Rod, rod Dreyer. yeah so he put out a um um a blog today or yesterday, today, um, talking about, I can't even pronounce the guy's name, but some drill rapper committed suicide accidentally on TikTok. Did you hear about this? Oh, X, X, not the X, oh, committed suicide accidentally? Is this just yeah. happened? Yeah, yeah. Oh, no. Yeah, what let me. Earth? Yeah, let me, let me, let me find this now. Um I'm Hold on, I'm going to I'm going to pull I can I can pull that up from just Google. I'm sure I can okay. find it. Okay. Cuz I also have queued up this this uh uh email that I want to read from Miss Adora. Um Rilo Huncho? But, yeah, that guy. Okay. So so this fool uh, Was um, he playing around with a the, gun? Yep. Yep. Yeah. So the so this this fool um, oh is proving evolution. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. The um, Dar- Darwin Award. Yeah, the Darwin Award. Um, but again, right? One of the one of the great things about what we do is like, let's see how we can tie this together. So, if you take what you're just saying 
and like let's take a different perspective of it right so those of you who don't know what drill rap is drill rap is um a very well it it it, it was well, as a subgenre, now it's like kind of like becoming kind of mainstream. No, I don't know if it's mainstream, but um, it's definitely something that the kids listen to, and it's mm-hmm. like extreme. It's the most extreme kind of quote unquote rap that you can, you know. It, it's really focused in on extreme explicit violence and extreme explicit um, fornication, mm-hmm. and so mm-hmm. the reason why I'm bringing this up is that. Um, hit Rod Dreher's blog was about you know kind of like this, and and he's talking about you know there was that um that parish in New Orleans that seceded or is is, is vying to secede and become its own um its own parish from um uh, I can't remember what part St George trying to be called St George. And so the, the idea that, you know, the barbarism that we find in, in segments, in particular, um, th- this segment of Black culture, right? Well, what I'm trying to get at in regards to bringing this up in your light is that um, we look at that and it's so easy to be like, oh, look at the barbarism of this. You know what I'm saying? You go look at the barbarism of drill rap, look at the barbarism of, of black youth, which is I'm, I'm not in disagreement at all, right? But what I'm trying to say is is that um, the reality of what we what we choose to be shocked at or not shocked at, and and and, and what we just um, kind of ex- accept as you know this is. This is just how it is. Um, that's another kind of um, scary part of society for me too, because what I'm trying to get at is, if someone was to promote, if if Butker came and was started promoting abortion rights, you know, or, or just abortion in general, and all the things you're talking about, what would happen? That was your point, right? What would happen? People would be. Man, with a forward-thinking guy, every woman okay. would be lu- sure. every woman would be lucky to have him. You know what I'm saying? It's like we need more men like him. You know what I mean? That that mm-hmm. was your point, right, Supreme? Like that's essentially what you were saying. You yeah, know? but he was he would be there promoting and what I'm saying death. Is, He'd be promoting death there, though. That's what's crazy. Uh, yeah, I'm not I'm not disagreeing with you. What I'm trying to say is he would have been applauded for them, right? And so that applauding of death, right? We still have some facets in society where we're kind of shocked and appalled at the promoting of death, but it's still promoting, like what I'm trying to get at is that promotion of death, that drill rapper and all that stuff. It's just kind of like, oh my gosh, and that's kind of what we expect. And like, it's terrible, kind of like, you know, it still can be somewhat of a boogeyman. But if, if, but if Bunker had gone up there and did that, everyone, no one would have bad an eyelash. And the thing is, is that proves the point to me, the fact that we are um, so lost and desensitized that we can't even recognize that they're the same thing. Like a butker getting up and promoting abortion and women being able to do that is no different than drill rap guy doing what he's doing. You, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. They're, they're no different. Yes. They're no different. Um, but the drill rap crowd and, you know, urban black youth are, are an easy um, kind of like they still can give the, 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 the veil of decency. You know what I mean? It, it's, we can still have a little bit of like there are those the barbarians out there. Um, and, it, and it's the kind of facade of Rome still being Rome. But the reality is, is the barbarians are in the gate. And the barbarians are in the gate because if Butker had done that, everyone, you know, most of society would applaud him. You know, you, I know that's kind of a convoluted, but does that argument make sense? Or, or may, fa- Father, Father, forgive oh, me. I think maybe even worse than, pe- worse than people applauding 
it's like it would it wouldn't have even almost even registered it would have been so normalized that it was like oh well that's what he was supposed to say mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. what i mean it's not even yeah. like they would be like oh that was such a great talk they'd be like oh okay yeah yeah, yeah. you know yeah if hey, yeah. that was a very loose yeah. very lucid and rational argument you seem like you've got a, a tight tight uh grasp of your faculties but it's, thank you it's a little bit like it's a little bit like if you had grown up um over time in like isengard and like so when like the elves show up or something everyone's like well this is obviously not good because we've mm -hmm. been raised to say that this is not good like what the mm -hmm. life that they're representing one it's a lie and mm -hmm. Saruman, I don't know, I'm really trying to run with this, but like Saruman has told us all forever that these lot, these elves and their light oppressed us for forever. Mm -hmm. And now we've embraced this other thing. So mm -hmm. all we know now is the mud and the blood and the industry and the death and the war. Mm -hmm. And it's like, so mm -hmm. when someone gets up and says, you know, we can be better than the war. We can be better than trying to destroy, you know, you know, Rivendell and, you know, the Shire and whatever, you know, we can do better than just conquering and working for Saruman. And was like, now this guy, he's real controversial. Like, you know, oh yeah, let's, yeah. let's go back to the way the elves went. I was trying to run with that as best as I could, but. I think it's good. I think it's good. I, I just want to say this because then I want to get to Isidore's email. I, right before jumping on right i'm at my house and you know i today i'm gonna to break the internet tonight. <laughs> i am going to give a concession to all my enemies who i'm so grateful for thank you thank you thank you because there's some truth to what my my detractors there's nothing but truth to what they say about me it's all it's all true um but the one thing that they don't know you know, one, one of the things I have to track is that, that say I'm a chauvinist and I'm a misogynist. And I'm going to come out publicly and just acknowledge that and say they are partially correct. I was a misogynist and I was a chauvinist um, in my past life. But I love women. I today, before I came on here, I was on my porch enjoying everything God's given me. And I was looking at my children, two of whom are these incredible, beautiful daughters. And my lovely wife, you know, like my kids are on the porch. My dog is right there. My wife is on the front lawn, sitting down, going through. And those of you who know Papati, it's like you can picture. She's like doing something with these like flowers that she's growing in the front of our yard, you know? And I was just enraptured. I didn't even want to like come and do, I didn't want to come and do uh, the talk tonight because I was just sitting there watching my family um, be together. And just the, the peace and the grace of God was so heavy in me. Watching the simplicity of my children, you know, eat watermelon on the porch and my, my wife rifling through flowers and picking them or something. And then I contrast that with the fact of, you know, I have my spiritual daughters. I have, you know, all my spiritual daughters in the parish and elsewhere, but in particular, the nuns. And, you know, the nuns are my daughters. You know, it's like I would lay my life down for them. And so I have this, God's given me this blessing to witness in my lifetime as my repentance is giving me this ability to love and nurture femininity to love and nurture women, to really love and nurture women. And to see the fact that God has allowed a sinner like me to have my eyes, the scales from my eyes fall and to not see women as objects and to see the beauty of women and to see the power of femininity. I have the blessing, which very few men in this world have. I have the blessing to see the power of my wife who has given birth to eight children and is one of the strongest women to ever walk the planet. Amen. And to see, and to see the, the joy and the grace that's within that of a wife and a mother. And then on the other hand, I have the joy, which even fewer men have, of being able to be um, 
a father and a protector and a guide to um, these nuns who are the shadow of the mother of God. And to see the height of what it means to be a woman in the sense of them imitating and chasing after with every fiber of their being, purity of the mother of God. I see, I see both in my life. So when I say I love women I'm a, and I'm a defender of women, I can actually put some money down and, and more than money, blood and sweat behind it and say, no, these things are an attack on women because I've seen the potential of what it means to be a woman. Yeah. Because on both ends, whether it's the nuns or whether it's my wife or my daughters, I see the power of what it means to nurture life the way that women do. So this is why it's important for me to really see that, you know, we're not doing a good enough job as men and as Christian men, as Orthodox men, and shout out to you non-Orthodox who listen to us. We need to do better on, on being on the offensive uh, and really calling these things out for what they are. It's not just because we should be outraged because it's gross. We should be outraged because it's undermining the fabric of, of our society, of our culture as, as the people of God. Because when you, St. Paul talks about this in Romans, right? And trying to take women and, and pull them away from their, from their natural use. It's like, it's so destructive. It's so destructive, right? So um, that being said, let me just read this letter. Yeah. Uh, this email, if that's okay. Right. So uh, this is from Mr. Dora. God bless you, Mr. Dora. Uh, Father Blast, I'm a long time listener to The Real Path. was hoping to make a suggestion for a topic that you could possibly cover on the show. Um, and she says, she goes on to say, you mentioned in your last video that women are very important in the church. And I was wondering if you could expand on that and talk about women's role in the church and in general. I personally struggle to understand this coming from a background as a lifelong atheist raised in dysfunctional and highly feminist family and culture. I think women often have a very intense fear of being subjugated by men or told they're lesser. It is a very despairing feeling to feel innately less than or powerless. I very often have temptations come at me to feel like I'm being treated like I'm lesser than because I am a woman. I have had intense feelings of sadness wash over me when I can't partake in communion while menstruating, for example, or feel I'm being treated like my worth is only in what I look like, etc. I try to remember these are just temptations, but it can be hard. So I would find it very helpful to have the worth and the role of women explained. I imagine other women might have the same feelings I have. Thank you for mm -hmm. your time. Kissing your right hand, Isadora. God bless you, Isadora. Absolutely. And forgive me, but I would even say, um, I, I mean, I've never read an email on here. I've never picked one. And so I've picked this one because I think it's important. I think it's timely. So I just want to say that, first of all, um, we just celebrated in the church the Sunday of the Murbury Women. And the Murbury Women are the ones who, I've said before, and it's just a common understanding of the church, the Murbury Women are the ones who braved the night and braved the possibility of being uncovered and, and arrested or murdered for, for seeking out Jesus, his body, his body, not even seeking Jesus. Like, think about the devotion that they showed to, to, the, to the Lord, right? They're not even going to try to sneak a word from him to say, what's the next step, master? He's dead. He's dead. And in, in, and in the light of his death, they're still so devoted to him that they're willing to still risk death while the apostles, the men, were hiding and scared, they were willing to risk everything to still honor him. And so the Murbang women become the first apostles. They become the apostles to the apostles. They're the ones who begin to bring the word that the Lord has risen. Shall we go on and talk about the mother of God who never left the Lord's side? The mother of God who alone never abandoned the Lord through all things? And as we've always talked about, who has the biggest icon in the church? Uh, if you have a dome, it's the Lord. But after the Lord, who is it? It's the mother of God. Mm. 
So what is the place of the women in the church? The place of the women in the church is the women are the very fabric of the church. We never speak of the church as he. The church is always her, she. Exactly. The church is exactly. our mother. <laughs> yeah. Right? So, so women are the very fabric. To, to be feminine, the feminine energy, the feminine movement is the very fabric of, of the church and what it means. The mother of God, the Teotoko, she is the first Christian. She is the mom of the church. Um, on a very practical level, just so no one wants to accuse me of, you know, trying to hide and detract and to skirt, skirt around it by, you know, over theologizing and over spiritualizing something. Um, any priest will tell you, I feel like I've said this before, any priest will tell you the church doesn't run without the women. The women are the very blood, bone, sinew, everything that keeps the church running. It's the try women. Having, try having a coffee hour without the women. Like with just a bunch of men standing around drinking like cans of water or something. It's like Yeah, or 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 try try having like at our parish we're so spoiled because we have such a beautiful parish, right? And and our worship is amplified and augmented and kept together by the women who adore and and adorn the temple. They adore the Lord and they adorn the temple with flowers and all the things that but they, it's not just that, like, you know, uh, one of the sisters, right? Like, like in particular, like the, like in our parish, right? It's the nuns who keep the nuts and bolts running, oftentimes bailing water, doing things, you know, unplugging toilets, doing things that, you know, oftentimes the men are present to do. And that's, that's in, in so many parishes, that's the case. That's in so many homes. That's the case. Because like St. John Chrysostom would say, the church is a little home. So many times the husband is not able to get to the honey-do list and the wife. How many wives are out there drilling and screwing doors? Plenty. So it isn't just this, oh, you know, go fix my tea and, and make. No, no, no. There's plenty of women who are holding everything down. So I could go on and on and on. But I also want to touch on this. This is also something that's going to be coming um, with the uh, publishing of the nuns uh, website, the convent's website is there's a um, a let's call it you know a booklet, um, some literature that's going to be coming out called the monthly Lent, and so I want to talk about this this menstruation issue right because no one talks about it right, and so um, and I'm not going to go super in depth because I'll leave it for people to read it. Um, when, it's, when it's released and published, but you know, the monthly Lent and it's this understanding that, you know, Isidore's talking about feeling, um, I can't remember the word she used. Um, Great feelings of you know, sadness. Great feelings of sadness. Yeah, about not being able to commune during her administration. And, and I would say to her, as I would say to all my daughters, that actually your, your abstinence during the time of your menstruation shows greater devotion and respect to God than the kind of entitled, casual partaking of Holy Communion that a lot of women do, right? Because it's in that abstaining during that time that you are, if you've been taught, you are participating actively in, in the penance of what it means to be a woman. And penance is not a punishment, it's a medicine. And, and it's a means by which you begin to now gather with your sisters uh, next to your mother Eve, and you begin to really learn to know what it means to now repent, to obey, to be um, in this place of longing. You know, that was something that came up again. Uh, we were talking about last week and, and uh this thing of longing, and it's in the blog that Sister is going to be releasing. This thing of longing is something really important to look at because, yeah, I think it is in this generation. There's a longing, but it's something that isn't bad, and it needs to be honed in the right way. What are you longing for? Are you longing for sentimentality and getting getting a, a wash to neo eighties music, <laughs> or are you longing for the deeper things of God and returning to paradise and longing to be made whole? And so a woman's time of menstruation is a time in which that becomes something not just kind of abstract, but 
she can now enter into it. Let me even flesh it out more because some people aren't making the connection. I call it the monthly Lent because what happens during Lent? So Lent is a lot of things. Lent is a tithe of our time. But Lent is also a time where we now consciously, we do what? What do we do? We fast, we pray, right? We humble ourselves, right? We humble ourselves so that we may draw near to God right? There's a service that happens only during Lent. What is that service? It's called the pre-sanctified liturgy, where the gifts are, you know, they're, they are consecrated prior. So it's a, it's a penitential uh, liturgy, and it has a very penitential, somber um, kind of ambiance or, or thread or feel to it. Mm-hmm. And it's it's like the, it's like one of the hallmarks of a great Lent, right? Because what is the what is the theme of Great Lent? It starts off the expulsion from paradise, the canon of the great canon, Saint Andrew, the expulsion from paradise. That's all of the hymnography is talking about this repentance, this this desire for paradise, this this longing to to be returned, and this pain over over our sin. This is what Great Lent is about. Right, and so during this time, we're we're called to what? We're called to fast. We're called to have our bodies humbled. Right? We're not having. You don't. You can't serve regular liturgy during the week. Right? You can't. You can't participate in the same way as you would usually outside of outside of Lent. Um, you're called to reflect on your passions. We pray the prayer of Saint Ephraim. Right? We go through all these things that cause us to be separated from God. We put all of our focus on this time of repentance, right? And we expect God to help us and to come to us and to pull out these deep passions and to uproot these things from us, right? Isn't this what Lent is about? I think I'm accurately describing Lent, right? Well, every month, <laughs> women are now brought to this place by which their passions the the pain of of being in this world in a very very uh tangible way comes to them and now if you if they were begin to see that that time of their cycle the menstruation is a time of it's it's a time just like lent it's a call just like it is in lent for them to look at themselves to look at their passions and the quote unquote let's talk about pms right and what that is and all those things that come up and and the craziness that so many women feel, quote unquote. This is not me talking. This is this is the reality, right? And I would say to you, my daughters, this is an opportunity actually for you to really see what's inside of you. And with the help of, of God to really begin to go even deeper. This is an opportunity for you to go so deeper into what it means to be not just you as an individual, Joni. Barbara, but what it means to be a daughter of Eve and to really begin a level of repentance that, that men don't have the opportunity to, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There's this saying that, you know, men have to climb mountains to reach God, to find God, but God comes to women. Mm-hmm. And so I would submit to you, yeah. God comes to women each month and, and says, okay, daughter, let's, let's, Let's pull some of this out. Let's 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 open things up and let's see. And so, this time of menstruation, when you when you are abstaining as you should, as you should, um, don't see it as a time of sorrow as the world would sorrow, but see it as a time to to be united with your mother and with all your your mother Eve and all your your sisters and to really reflect on the penance given to women. As we have to reflect as men, then we could do a whole nother one next week about the penance of man, the penance of Adam. But tonight we're looking at the penance of Eve and, and the struggle that women have to endure. And it's and it's manifested in such a unique and powerful way during their cycle. And so the abstaining from that and realizing, you know, this this penalty of death that we all carry in us, but it's revealed in a different way. And and this um, this very powerful way of, of menstruation and the abstaining because of that and, and how that abstaining 
Um, if you almost can see the correlation when Mary seeks to touch the Lord in the garden, he says, don't touch me yet, Mary. I haven't sinned to get to my father, right? You can now be in this place where this inability to really connect with the Lord as you would like, this period of time is a time in which deep longing can, can be fostered in you. Yeah. And then from there, when you, when you join, it's like you could have Pascha every month. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that was, that is something I've definitely noticed with women is God coming to women and I think the joke is, is, um, you know, men get into the church first and they go really hard for a while. Like, you know, they're like, oh, father, you know, if they're, you know, talking to Father Jimmy or whoever, give me prostrations, you know, like give me a 20 minute prayer rule every day. And then the wives kind of take a while to come on and eventually they do. And by that time, the men have burned themselves out and it's the women that keeps the family going like going to church, because I know that my wife has been a hugely instrumental in making sure that we still go to services. And there are times where I'm like, I just don't, I'm not feeling it, whatever, whatever. My wife is like, get in the car. We are Orthodox Christians. We go to service. And I'm like, okay, that's fair. And like, that's only because something radical has happened to my wife. And, and you know, that's, that's like, that is ultimately like, it's an experience that I haven't had. You know, it's mm -hmm. like I've had to climb the mountain or whatever, but like God came to Markella. So. And so you see this thing, too, I just want to say about one of the problems here. Um, and and the conditioning. And this is uh, interestingly enough. I'm curious to see the responses, because I would say that some of the things that would make people just lose their minds or I mean, I'm just saying. <laughs> what's revealed, you know, in, in, in the life of, of the church. And, and that is, you know, there's these things where everything is about trying to throw off the boundaries and the strengths that are given to us for salvation, you know, and it's, it's in those penances, it's in those barriers that are given, you know, the Lord, the Lord gave us mercy when he blocked the way to the tree of life. But now people would say, you know, people would complain about God being terrible and mean and and not, you know, giving the opportunity. But that that was a mercy. And so it's very difficult when you see how twisted and, and inverted everyone's perspective has been. I mean, this is the work of the devil to do that. But the limitations that are upon both men and women, but we're talking about women right now, the limitations that are put upon women that Isidore is talking about, who am I to say, of course she feels these, and, 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 and from my experience, um, most women do until they're ushered into, until they're invited and then guided into deeper, deeper streams of repentance. And those deeper streams are first and foremost um, not hyper-individualistic. In order to really kind of get in order to really be in tune with what, what's being said, you have to pull outside of this hyper-individualistic, you know, postmodern milieu um, of, you know, the narrative of I can kind of do anything, and that's a good thing. It's not a good thing. Uh, if anything, it, it's done nothing but sown destruction and confusion. It's when we accept our limitations. It's when we begin to accept that we're weak and that these limitations are given to us so we can see the reality of the strength of who God is, but also, too, of, of our fallenness. This is when we begin to enter into true spiritual life. So I would say to you, Sadora, and again, to all you, my sisters and my daughters out there, that actually, you know, these struggles are a blessing. Actually, if you begin to take them on, then you'll, you'll, you'll see that the Lord is, is closer to you than you realize. There's there's a something here, Father, that's striking me is that if well, I'll I'll, I'll preface it with this. There's I I was I actually ran across a, a video from a, a, a Orthodox priest I hadn't 
he didn't he wasn't familiar to me i hadn't run across him but it's his channel's relatively old i'm forgetting his name but he it struck me because he was describing how he came to orthodoxy through sort of the occult which there was a through line that was there that was like my own and yours and obviously a great mm -hmm. many saints and elders and all of this, that there seems to be a through line. And but he said something that I had said myself, and I know, Father, that you have said before, was that he said, you know, that the reason that he even became attracted to the occult or or that, that he moved in that direction was because it was what he was experiencing spiritually was real. You know, and he was also talking mm -hmm. about psychedelia and all of these things, that what he was experiencing was real, and that's what struck him. And and for me, it's almost as though if there were not, if, if, if menstruation did not have uh, some sort of correlating, what am I trying to say? If there wasn't a recognition and something being different related to the mm -hmm. Eucharist around menstruation, mm -hmm. then it wouldn't mm -hmm. be, I would know that it wasn't real. And the reason I say mm -hmm. that is because like ayahuasca, when I did ayahuasca, the shamans would always be like, are any women here men menstruating? Because if you are, we need to go and have a conversation about what's about to happen because it's going to be very different. Like what's mm -hmm. about to like and and mm -hmm. I know that was real. I engaged mm -hmm. with the spirit and it was real. So it's almost like if the church, if the Eucharist wouldn't be real, I would know that the Eucharist wasn't real if there wasn't something mm -hmm. related to, oh, we need to have a conversation about menstruation because this is going to have a spiritual effect. Yeah. Does that make well, sense, I, what I'm saying well, there? It does, it does. And, and, you know, this is a, I'm just going to say it, um, maybe this is the one, I don't know. But um, just for the sake of conversation, I'm sure there's some outlier or some exception to what I'm about to say. So I, I'm not trying to say it in an absolute sense, but forget the polemical. It's a broad audience. Right. But I would say to you, <clears throat> I think that there's a pretty strong correlation between people who, let's say, did not practice um, the ritual purity of, of, of women abstaining from uh, Holy Communion during menstruation and those who have no problem um, engaging with the profaning of Holy Communion due to quote unquote, sure, uh, yeah, you know, yeah, uh, you know, COVID. So that correlation I have found. I'm sure there's some exceptions, but I haven't seen them. But fully acknowledging that they could be, but that's what I found. Those who were have no problem with that, they're also they, they tended to be ones who think that that is a art, uh, a kind of acronistic, uh, terrible thing that women should abstain during um, demonstration. I find that interesting. <laughs> you know, I find I find that I find that asso that association interesting. Would the yeah. argument be that well, we just don't like being told no? At the end of the day, no, no. I mean, yes, you're right, but they would never say that. <laughs> sure, okay. You know what I mean? No one. I mean, would say I, that because that's too honest. <laughs> so, I also think you know, um, remembering that, like, I don't, I'm not like the most insightful ab about this stuff in general, but like the opposite, or not the opposite, but the the men's equivalent would be self abuse right like like that's a hard mm -hmm. line for mm -hmm. you cannot commune until uh, you you are uh, confess it and then according to the spiritual father a penance is given and by self abuse mm -hmm. we mean masturbation mm -hmm. and i think w mm -hmm. that would be in some ways right or or nocturnal mission not forgive me it's you know kind of pg13 episode or nocturnal mission okay like a man Unless, unless there's confession and penance given, whatever, man, the nocturnal mission, he can't commit. Yeah, absolutely. And so, so by that, and then you could even make the argument, well, the man didn't do anything to deserve that. Like, he, that's not something he invited on himself, you know, like, you know, whatever, whatever. It's, it's for whatever reason, but he still can't commute.
Like, I'm sorry. Like, right. that's just the way it is. It's just like, okay, well, like, um, but see, the, the problem is, is again, and, and it's in order to understand, you have, we have to shift our, our view. And, and this is gets back to this whole thing of this is why, um, like, you know, like the two churches, right? The ones who want the church to look at the world and the ones who want to be saved, right? Um, because the reality of it is, is, well, all the emphasis on, well, I can't help it. That's not fair. Which, which that argument, that's the world's thinking, you know? God made me this way. Let's, let's write a song about it. Like all the stuff, right? Um, whereas if you, if you have the right orientation, you wouldn't even think that way because you would just have the eyes and the heart to to look upon and to long for the holiness and the goodness of God. And then you would do all that's in your power to be able to be brought in line and in communion with that holiness, right? You wouldn't want to have that holiness be de be degraded because of you. You'd want to actually be lifted up to that holiness if you have the right mindset, right? And that's the mindset of the ancients. That's the mindset of the church, right? Um, and it's only until the world comes in and people wanting to imitate the world in this. And again, um, I, it's funny because I was talking with one of the sisters today and she was commenting on um, something uh, Hiradisa had, had said to her about, um, you know, Eve, didn't just have the one-off conversation with the serpent. She had already been, there had been a dialogue already. There was a kind oh, of, you know, okay. sure. there was already something, go, you know, there was already some back and forth. They'd already, there was already a familiarity that had been there. And I, I, I want to bring that up because, you know, this taking on, this didn't just happen overnight. This is, this, this is getting back to why this is an old, thing we've been talking about, but, you know, 20 was a blessing, truly, because the worldliness was there for a long time. And then finally, the process of wake up, wake up, wake up began. That's what happened, wake up. And so wake up from your slumber, my people, wake up, my daughter, you know, uh, the worldliness has to end, you know, come out from them, my people, right? And this worldliness, this um, the, both the metaphorical and the literal uncleanliness that we're not to find ourselves in, right? I mean, you know, just just for I hope there's I hope there's some women here that are fuming, meaning meaning not for outrage, but meaning I'm glad you're here and I'm glad God's kept you still here to listen to this. This is making you comfortable because to me that's a sign of, of God in your life and it's a sign of you willing to want God, because I would just say this, we could just take a whole, not maybe, we, maybe we'll do it next time, maybe we'll do it, like, I don't know where we're at time-wise, but we could talk about all day long about men and men's problems, and I mean, we could just have a whole thing on porn. And I'll just say this. Endless, endlessly. I, <laughs> oh my God. I mean, I mean, Lord have mercy, right? So we, men got, uh, men got our stuff too, but I'm bringing all this up, and, and even on and even on this section about menstruation, I would still maintain all this reveals the glory of women. All this reveals how precious women are to us, and how we are to see women. You know, whether they're wives, daughters, sisters. You know, um, women deserve more we, than to be like just pale shadows of men, like just like trying to imitate men, and you know, trying to act like men in a way. That's just like, why would you want to do that? There's yeah. just no need. You Like w the thing that we've got, we've got, but the thing that you've got is, is in, like, it's just so good. It, when it's mm -hmm. good, it's so good. And I mean, I'm homies with all of my kids. I love all of my kids and my kids love me so far. And I can say that like when the chips are down though, they want mom. And like, that's, and like, you know, at 3 a.m. when the baby wakes up or whatever, it's not like, you know, I you know, I guess a message would just say like, okay, well, the man should wake up with the baby. 
and give the baby a bottle or whatever, whatever, whatever. But it's like, he doesn't, he doesn't want me. He wants mom. Like, and how mm -hmm. is this? This is not, this is not a skill that can be taught. I'm not particularly like, you know, this is not something that I just need to work on that the baby, no, the baby wants mom. Mm -hmm. The baby wants to be with mom. It's like, yeah, of course he does. That's his mom. And to try and like cheapen that for some kind of like, I think at the end of the day, one of the major things that I think went wrong and boy, I just I'm prepared to just get annihilated, whatever. I'm wrong, whatever. <laughs> the good thing is I don't have to be right. I really don't have to be right. The only thing I got to be right on is what the church teaches. And that's only because I'm echoing someone else's, someone holy's opinion. But about this stuff, I think it all went wrong that we stopped valuing the work that women do. And it became unromantic to be a home, uh, like a, like a, like a homemaker. At some point that became unromantic. And I think that that's when the striving amongst many other things, but I began, that's when the striving is like, well, this thankless and unromantic and unsexy work that I'm going to be doing day in and day out. Why would I do that? because our society places little to no emphasis on how cool or important it can be. Well, Andrew, I, I want to pose a question on that, though, because I'm glad you brought that up because I, I was just thinking that. And to me, it seems femi what you said indicates to me that feminism must have come directly from the devil. And the reason why I say that is <laughs> oh, man, no, directly, directly. <laughs> And the I reason agree. why the reason why <laughs> so the reason why I say that is because neither who is the person who decided that that work that the work of a wife and mother was not valuable it Definitely. certainly wasn't men and it no. certainly wasn't women it didn't come from men and it didn't come from women because I don't know any man that isn't highly appreciative of a woman who's cooking and cleaning and raising his children, there's no man on earth who is like, no, nah, that's crap. I don't like that. No. And there's also no woman out there, clearly, because they're the ones who are like, well, we should get paid for this work. So clearly they value it. So I'm like, who's the person who said it wasn't valuable? It's got to be the devil. It has to be. It's got to be the devil. It has to be because it can't. It was no man <laughs> and it was no woman. Insane. Yeah. Satan? <laughs> Satan? Yeah. yeah. I mean, so that's it's... that's that's the thing that I'm like, who said who said it wasn't valuable? Mm -hmm. Who's the person? Because they're feminists blame it on men. But that's not if you take 30 seconds to think, there's like no way. No. Absolutely not. No, and I mean it's it's the cornerstone of society is the homemaker. It's like, what, well, what kind of home did you, what were you raised in? Was it a good home? Well, no, it was a horrible home. 99% of the people I work with who are suffering from addiction of some sorts had a horrible home. It's like, if the home were better, if the home were more unified, then that we would have happier, healthier people. It would just, I just wanna, yeah. I, I just want to say this to kind of bring in another threshold right there, which people probably, whatever, but bring it, bring it back in the drill rack, right? For as barbaric and animalistic and, and inhuman as that culture is, granted, the one quality that you can assume that they have, the one human quality they have is they love their mama. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's, it's the one thing that even if it's just a complete degradation of women, all those things, no matter how they view women that they would be, you know, pounding explosives on, don't say anything yeah. about their mama. Yeah. Right. I just I just bring that up because that's that would be a given. You know what I'm saying? And it's it's the one kind of like visage of humanity maybe left for those poor souls is that they they too respect and love their mamas. And and you know, we would obviously have to come back to that to begin to see the problem, which we've talked about at length here, with when there's no father. Because that whole culture can only exist because of the absence of the father, mm -hmm. right? But but this, I'm just bringing that up because even that 
Um, it's the one quality, one human quality that they have left is you know, they, they would love their moms too. Right. You know that. And- well, but and but also, what's interesting is that what they're the women that they are throwing those expletives at. If you notice, those women are not acting like mothers. No. So it's like there's the there's the exact. If those women, the question is, if those women were acting like mothers, like wives and mothers, and if that's what those women, and for the women who are pursuing that in their life, are they even addressing those expletives to them? Right. So there's like this very. Go ahead, Father. I'm sorry. Well, no, I would just say, but that would even prove the point again, because. Generally speaking, and of course, who knows, uh, but even that woman who's seen as whatever, objectified and, and brutalized and all that stuff, if that woman then becomes pregnant with said drill, drill guy's baby, it's like it, everything will even change then for him because he'll now, instead of just you know degrading her for you know uh, being some uh, sex object, He'll now be upset with her. It's like, you know, you such and such, you know, like basically her failure to be a mom to his kid is going to now be the reason why he's, That's you know, um, do, do you see what I'm saying? So it still proves the point because it would be the absence of her leaving behind the reason why she got pregnant with him in the first place was because of the promiscuity and, and the animalistic sexuality, right? But once she becomes a mother to the kid, it's just like, oh, uh, if he kept acting like that, that's where all the beef and problems happen now. Where it's just like he can't, he hates her because it's like you should be a mom and you got my kid and this and that. You know what I mean? But there's so also a self, the there's a self, there's a self loathing because like it's almost like no woman that's worthy would sleep with him. Like mm-hmm. any woman who's sleeping with him because he's a scumbag. Is is like she's automatically not. It's a. It's this weird self loathing, and it's really mm-hmm. horrible up, in that way, right? You, you just that, opened up this whole other aspect of that whole thing. That's like that's a whole other rabbit trail mm-hmm. because that I never really thought of that, but that's absolutely true. Like it's like I would never want to be a part of any club that would accept me. You know, I'd never really want to. Ever... That that's it right there. Yeah, right there. Yeah, self-loathing, self, okay. self, it's self, it's self-hatred, yeah. which is really, which is really kind of a, a like it's pride in and of itself, isn't it? Like it's the, it's the, mm-hmm. it's meta pride. Yeah, yeah, and it's the fruit of, it's the fruit of, it's the the height of nihilism. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is great. Which is great because I think of all the. Um, all the posh boys uh, who, you know, you know, they got they got the good haircuts and you know they got the peaky blindy haircuts and stuff like that. They want to talk about Nietzsche, but I'm like, if you really want to understand what Nietzsche brings about, look at drill rap culture. That's the end of Nietzsche. It isn't you having a pea coat and a smoke and your hair parted to the side. You know what I mean? And uh, reading a book on the sea coast, on the stormy sea coast. That's not. That's not Nietzsche. That's not. You know what I mean? And and that's not where. That's not where it ends up. It, in, it ends up like drill, drill rap culture ultimately. Um, and you know, maybe at best, a syphilis ridden Hitler. At best, you know. But... Sure, syphilis ridden Hitler. That's funny. I yeah. I mean, I think, and that is. I think more than anything, the epitaph of my generation, maybe going into the next one would be like, they played with forces they didn't understand. And it, that, because people throw around the word nihilism, they throw around words about, you know, mm-hmm. and, and, and the patriarchy, you know, smash the establishment, defund the police, whatever, whatever, whatever. And uh, it's like, you guys don't know what you're playing with. Like, you don't know what this actually looks like. And uh, when mm-hmm. you do, it's, it it has all the trappings of a child throwing a store like a temper tantrum in a Kmart. Mm-hmm. It's just mm-hmm. you, <laughs> it's really yeah. just you having. At the end of the day, there's an author, Kurt Vonnegut, 
who said at the end of the day, people who are protesting, there's just something that they don't like about life. And it mm -hmm. has very little to do with that issue. It has very little to do with what's going on there. They just want things to be different. And like, and well, why do you, want, and then, you know, to take that back, well, why do you want things to be different? Well, maybe things aren't so good. And maybe you have no mm -hmm. context for what suffering is and what it can do. And all you've been told is that you have 60 some odd years to try and fit as much pleasure in as you can. And every minute you're not doing that is kind of a wasted minute. And it's like, well, of course, then, yeah, of course, people would welcome nihilism. Of course they would. They're beaten down. They're ground down. There's nothing left. There's no, I think Cyprian, you said it a long time ago on a podcast before I had met you that you said any happy, healthy society would never accept if accepted the lockdowns. They would have never, ever. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Like, I want to go live life. Uh, what we had was the general understanding, a general silent acknowledgement from most people. I'm good on this whole thing I'm doing. On this whole thing, I don't really, it's not important enough for me to fight for. I, I don't want to go into work. I don't want to, you know, continue to do the obligations I have. I would like to just sit at home and bake sourdough and blog about my feelings and watch Netflix. Like, that's what I would like to do. And it's like, okay, well, doing that is going to land you in a place where you're no longer going to see life as worthwhile. But, you know, what mm -hmm. do I know? Well, on that, on that note, I actually was having a conversation last night around sunset down at the beach with like some of our friends and everything. And we, we were reminiscing about, uh, you know, 2020 and also about the fact that uh, sort of after everything had kind of cooled down, the governor at the time, he wrote this like sort of debrief sort of missive about like, okay, the emergency is over and all of this stuff. And in it, he had said he had noted that we, Although there were people who wore masks, there was no there was never a government mask mandate here. There was never a government social distancing mandate here. There was never a lockdown here. And it's you, you know, you 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 mentioned that thing about like no happy society. I don't even know that it's a happy society, but it's definitely no traditional society because we certainly saw that happen in Eastern Europe where they were just like, nope, out, out and out, like we're not gonna do this. But he said himself. He said, "Our cult, the foundation of our culture is regular gatherings of extended family. Mm -hmm. And so therefore, had we ever imposed such a rule, we would have destroyed our culture. And he said is, this in a letter that he wrote to everybody. And so he said, I could not have done it. So culture mm -hmm. is the, the gathering of extended family. And who's holding the extended family mm -hmm. together in most of the in most cases? It's the women. Women. It's women. It's women. It's the they're one hundred percent. Everything mm -hmm. is held together by women. Every 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 little aspect of life. Mm -hmm. The first time you move out away from the good mom, you know the mom that took care of you or whatever, and you realize like that laundry basket, it just keeps getting added to, and like it's not getting taken away, and no one's doing it. What's up with that? It's like, well, because your whole life, your mom has done this. Your whole life, your mom has taken this away and your clothes just end up folded back in your in your dresser. It's like, how how is it not like, there has to be a severe warped distortion for there to see anything other than a complete adoration and love and in, 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 in the true sense, empowerment of women in the church. Like there's just, it has to be this complete warped distortion to look at that and say, there is no place for women in the liturgy. I'm like, well, yeah, I mean, I mean, the, the, that's, I think that's what's scary. Getting back to what I was saying about like why it is scary, because that's already begun. And I think that's part of the trans thing. I mean, that's where the, if it was possible, the ability to introduce legitimate confusion on the most basic level on one of the most basic fundamental um, manifestations of goodness which is the mother which is what which is you know motherhood right because that's what that's what really it's not just about femininity right it's about motherhood look the the attack on fatherhood is already it's already successful right it's already it's already been successful right fatherhood is the patriarchy 
right? Because because literally patriarchy and smashing patriarchy is about destroying fatherhood. Mm-hmm. So what's so what's next? Motherhood. It says it right on and the box, I, Father. It says it right on the it, box. Right, right. So that's that's where we're at, and it's you know once that's complete, which we're all but there probably, right? Because um, if if I don't know what to tell you if you don't understand abortion is the height of that. Um, but then let's go even one step further and again, the trans thing, like let's just completely destroy the ability to discern and to recognize the ultimate good of, 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 of the mother, of the love that's revealed in the mother. Then what's left? Well, you know, this is, this is what they did in, in Tesh, the Romanian prison, but just on a global scale now. Because it's the demons, right? And it's completely depersonalized, take away the personhood, and completely take away all semblance of humanity. So that, so that the the subject could be remade in the image of something else. Um, and you know that that's the case because the world is all but that. And now the the press for the church, the press for the church, the the church. Who she is the sentinel of the of everything that is good from the father of lights, you know. Um, thank you, these Benedictine women, whatever they were, they weren't nuns. But you know, this press to to now have these uh, orcish banners being taken up in the church to kind of like connect what Andrew was saying and talking of these orcish banners. And I think this is you know getting full circle now the Bumble thing because. That ad makes no sense unless you see it with a spiritual lens, and it's it's the it's a it's a warning shot across the bow for those who have eyes to see and ears to hear of of what's really going down, you know. And so, um, you know, the from my perspective, the best the best thing to do is to really press in and to now arm and call women up to be, you know what they're what they've always been meant, meant to be you know so wow the murdering women didn't even have a plan for how to roll the boulder away they didn't even really like they were like i don't we're just gonna figure it out and my baptizing priest was always like the men were at home eating potato pancakes like the women went out to go do it and they were just sitting at home like you know doing whatever and they didn't even have like a plan they just went. And I mean, that's, it's. Well, it was worse than that. I mean, I just want to, I think it's important because I know you're just kind of I'm talking, but they weren't just sitting at home. They were scared. They're hiding. Yeah. That's exactly. the point. They, they weren't just like, oh, okay. You know, like they were hiding. Yeah. The men were, the men were hiding. The men were scared. Yeah. That That's, that's important to, to bring out, you know? No, it's good. I mean, I just, I don't know. I I just don't I I could see why I could see the twisted logic, but it's like there's just such an adoration. There's just such a love for women. There's just such a like a be a woman, what a woman is supposed to be. Like not yeah. Anyway. So uh I think we're coming up on two hours. That's about two mm-hmm. hours. By the time we're done with the outro, it'll be about two hours. So um well, shucks. Um, so anytime, okay, Father, let's talk about the icons first. Let's talk about the sisterhood first. Sure. Sure. Yeah. So, um, please, you know, check it out. Um, got these uh, icons. Uh, the first one, which is of Saint Mary of Egypt, is out, um, and the proceeds from the icons. Um, there are uh, icons that have been by my hand and icons that I've done. So this first one that's been released is the same Mary of Egypt. Um, and all the proceeds from there go to support the, the, the continent. Um, and uh, the next one, I believe, I, I forgive me, the next one's either going to be the Soccer Google Hearts or the Terror of Demons. Um, and then there's also uh, uh, Second Coming, uh, Revelation 19 icon that's coming. 
Um, there's a, a Saints or Throny icon that's coming. Um, Last Supper is coming. So that's some that's some good things. Hopefully, um, people will be blessed and, and inspire them to pray. But please, you know, check it out. Um, um, various sizes. They're they're really nice. Very high quality canvas print and um yeah i just can't i can't say enough about the the work that the sisters are putting forward and keep an eye out we'll have a link to um so that uh, when it is live eric can just kind of click on it but i would encourage everyone to check out their website comments website and again the, these blog posts are going to be very good and um i'm excited for that because um the the ability to to have um this is precise talking about in regards of kind of pushing back against you know these orcish banners and, and the sisters sharing their their love of god and their their experience of, of fighting this fight um in the city in the west um for the love of god and holy holy orthodoxy it's very powerful i believe and then with that um there's gonna be some activists that are gonna be released an activist to the mother of god tear demons activists to the mother of god to spell the envy and poison healer poisoned hearts um, there's going to be, uh, again, this monthly Lent, which will go really in depth on, on what we're speaking about today and how women can really grow deeper in their um, participation in the penance of menstruation and, and, and really learning to honor God through at the abstaining from, from Holy Communion. And so this monthly Lent will be going in depth on that and, and teaching them out and how women can grow in their prayer and their love of God through that. So all that's going to be on the website and other great things to come. This is, this is one last thing I wanted to touch on just very, very briefly. There have been times where I have gotten so much grace from abstaining. I'm just like, just, it wasn't right. It mm -hmm. wasn't the right thing to do. I, it, te technically nothing had gone wrong. Like technically I could commune. I just wasn't approaching it with the proper spirit. And it's like, I got like a big thumbs up from someone somewhere where they were just like, yep. And so like, I just got a lot of grace and there's, there's something to be said about just abstaining, you know, sometimes when it, when it, when it, when it needs to like, um, mm -hmm. I've, heard, I've heard various people take, you know, so what you have to abstain, but it's my name's day. So what, so what, you know, it's okay. It's not a big deal. It's there's just grace there too. So that being said, um, please feel free to reach out at Royal Path dot um, contact Royal Path contact dot network, network contact is what it is. At Royal Path network. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With the, and then Andrew at Royal Path dot network. Um, there's a those are places to reach out to us if need be. Um, and the important ones that I definitely forward to father. Um, so, you know, just know that, uh, slowly, but surely we do answer those. Um, there's a couple of them. I, I don't think need an answer like the AI video game or Orthodox AI video game. It's no good. It's no good. There's just nothing good about that. There's nothing I feel comfortable about whatsoever. So, um, and then, uh, whenever we mention music, it's on Royal path podcast playlist or something like that on spotify and on apple music we try and put people up there who we mention um on the show artists and stuff like that so then also we have a merch store royalpath.store that is um all proceeds again go to the parish and to the people who make the merchandise um we don't see any of that there are no kickbacks happening and then scola coffee uh link in the description it's very good. I'm not drinking coffee right now, but from what I understand, my wife, who is kind of a snob about coffee, gets her approval. She likes it. She likes it quite a bit. So, um, so I think that that is it. I think that's our business. And thank you very much for having a good night. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.